Hello everyone, it's DuckFerry07. Today we are playing Azorius Topter Combo. Okay, so very excited about this brew. I just played the league with it. I did a trophy with it and the deck felt great. It had some crazy, crazy turns, comboing on turn 3. A uh, lot of stuff going on. So uh, we'll see what's happening here. So uh, we have Grand Architect. This card is very good in a Topter, uh, in a topter deck. Especially with Agatha Soul Cauldron, it allows you to combo with Topter on turn three. So uh, turn turn uh, two, you play your Topter Foundry, and turn three, you play either one of your zero mana artifacts, or you had one in the play from turn one, like Sentinel or whatever. And turn three, you play Grand Architect. You tap Architect for two mana. You can then sack your uh, artifact, whatever you have in the play. To create a blue topter artifact uh, uh, token then you tap a token for two blue mana too uh, you put sword of the meek into play and you have one spare mana to continue sacking the sword of the mix and getting if infinite topters so with the grand architect you can get infinite combo as soon as turn three and uh, that is like really really good and it's not even that uh, hard to do so basically you just need to have Turn to Topter, turn three Grad Architect, and some one of these artifacts into play. So it is quite possible against uh, non-interactive decks, for example. And uh, against interactive decks, it's uh, possible, very possible to do it on turn four. So, uh, but also there is another combo in this deck. If you don't know, the combo consists of Emery and Rona. Uh, so uh, you basically what you do here is uh, I got you have I got a Soul Cauldron. This is a very important card in this deck, crucial. And I got a Soul Cauldron exiles Emery from your graveyard and puts puts counter on Rona. And this way Rona gets all the Emery abilities. So when you do this, you can uh, target uh, Mox Amber in your graveyard, uh, play uh, Mox Amber and uh, untap Rona. And if you have two Mox Ambers this way, you can make infinite mana and then you can target Vulcan Ballista from your graveyard and cast it for infinite and kill your opponent. Okay, so, uh, but uh, what what's really cool here is how well Rona and Emily synergize with Grand Architect. So there are blue creatures and Grand Architect says you can tap the blue creature for to add two mana. So often if you have one of these uh, cards in play, from earlier turns, which is like very often, uh, you can play your Grand Architect on turn 3 and immediately tap your two blue creatures and cast uh, the One Ring or cast some other stuff like a Cauldron uh, or your other artifacts so like Vulcan Ballista. Uh, but that's not all because uh, the uh, Grand Architect also works very cool with Rona because Rona says uh, it untaps when you play a legendary spell. So, for example, you have uh, Rona in play and you play in Grand Architect on turn 3. Uh, you uh, take uh, mana from Rona, then you can play, for example, Mox Amber, uh, untap Rona and get two more mana. And uh, this way you can get like really, really crazy uh, turn 3s when you can play uh, Boot Ring and uh, uh, Soul Cauldron and uh, other stuff too, and just make uh, unbeatable board state uh, that early in the game. And yeah, so a uh, lot of cool stuff, cool synergies going on here. Uh, also, I think for this build, Grand Architect is a better card than Urza. This, uh, this uh, uh, deck is really trying to combo fast in a lot of ways. And uh, since Grand Architect is comboing with Top Terps Foundry uh, in a and uh, interacting so well with your other cards in the deck, it's just much better than uh, Urza High Lord Artificial because... Uh, Urza uh, is one mana slower and it's just that uh, meaningful in the most of the games and that one mana more as you know as in a, with a lot of other cards uh, in this game one mana difference is a really huge huge difference and yeah so uh, if you will see through the gameplay if Urza was Grand Architect none of the wins I had uh, none of the combos I made would be possible so um, uh, other than that, we have some uh, Esper Sentinels uh, to uh, slow our opponents, mainly in the early phase. Uh, we have some Rings, uh, some Mox Embers, because we have 8 Legendaries. 
and uh, on the sideboard uh, some removal uh, subtleties and some uh, one of uh, um, Urza Saga targets and some Cascade hate and uh, Leyland Binding hate, whatever. Uh, Engineered Explosives, uh, Silex 1-1 uh, split and that is the deck. So let's go to the gameplay and see how the league went. Okay, so match one. Uh, playing second. Uh, keeping a mediocre hand, I have a top third uh, combo in my deck and one Aruna. Opponent started off with the Channeler. I draw uh, Urza Saga for turn, which uh, Urza Saga is pretty good. Opponent plays third Channeler, which is huge. I go for top third Foundry. I really want to, because I have a uh, Sword of the Meek in my hand, I really wanted to resolve this as soon as possible. So, uh, turn three, I go for Saga. Uh, try to cast my sword, opponent decides to use the counter spell uh, in this situation probably uh, just to get uh, the delirium because they have three channelers and they need to start attacking and finishing this game as soon as possible. Opponent uh, gets to nine damage through, uh, puts me down on eight life. I place per sentinel, opponent uh, goes for the bolt does a lot of uh, channeler triggers of course i sack sentinel i create a top tier, I gain one life opponent then uh, kills uh, another top tier, but that is fine i still like uh, i have two more abilities uh, I, I can do this turn so this means i'm gaining uh, two more life and um, getting two more top tier tokens and next turn i can get five tokens and opponent is at the moment on one card in hand, which makes it uh, pretty hard for them. And I have uh, also Urza Saga resolving next turn, which can get a Soul Guide uh, Lantern, and then uh, shrink all those channelers to 1-1. One, one. So here I am with my uh, two, two top tiers. I decide to go block one of the channelers, uh, trade them, I let six damage through, and yeah, my opponent knows what is going to happen next turn and they concede, that is it. I succeeded to survive this early pressure with the three channelers, uh, thanks to the top tier combo. Okay, so uh, game two had to mulligan this, kept the pool and the saga. At the moment I don't have um, white mana to cast my uh, top tier foundry. Opponent again starts with the channeler. I get the land I needed, so I have option to go either turn to Saga, start uh, removing cards from the graveyard with Agatha, or go for the top tier combo, uh, for the top tier, yeah. I have a uh, Sword of the Meek in my hand, so I really would like to resolve this. I have two top tier foundries, so I decide to go for, uh, for this first, and then save a portable hole Saga, Agatha for uh, next turn. Opponent uh, goes uh, express for expressive. I find Spiral Canal passes the turn, and uh, they uh, make their channeler three three, which was very important. Okay, so I untap, of course, uh, play Portable Hole first. I really wanted to get rid of this channeler because yeah, that uh, three damage pressure is really uh, really hard. A uh, really good tempo. So I start uh, removing cards from their graveyards, try to get uh, rid of their instant sorceries, but also uh, get rid of uh, their uh, delirium. I decide not to go for top tier foundry uh, this turn, just sort of the meek, and uh, continue removing uh, cards from uh, their graveyard. Opponent finds a mox ember. And I had I had now two spare mana to play around spell pierce at least, so I go for my second top tier. Uh, opponent unfortunately has the counter spell. I continue removing uh, instant sorceries from their graveyard. Uh, opponent now has a preordain and again a Ragavan dash. Unfortunately, they found that uh, Alpine Moon. To lock my Urza Saga, otherwise the Urza Saga from my hand would be like really good. Uh, but they also find my Rona and uh, 
Now they didn't have a counter for my wandering and I resolved the wandering so that uh, gives me a great chance. In this game now opponent uh, they missed uh, the Rona trigger. Okay, so uh, they played Ragavan, played the Channeler, so I really uh, I am just on seven life at the moment, and uh, I really need to find some solutions. I go for Emery here, uh, play uh, Grand Architect. Yeah, if I resolve my uh, Topter Foundry, I would now have um, I would now have infinite combo with. Uh, making my emery into grad architect and just making the infinite topters uh, this way uh, i didn't have uh, much options opponent uh, has otavara uh, to bounce my emery and uh, get lethal with the ring in my upkeep so that's it okay let's check out the game three okay in the game three uh, had to mulligan uh, that starting hand, they kept a pretty decent one uh, As per Sentinel is pretty hard for them uh, on the play So I uh, did have, uh, I saw Alpine Moon last game But I'm not sure like if they have Blood Moons or Magus of the Moon somewhere So I decided to go for uh, basics in my first uh, two first turns And this uh, pretty much ideally went for me uh, Esper Sentinel turn 1 into Portable Hole Emery and Milling Sword of the Meek immediately. I really really like how uh, Emery uh, is very good in the Sword deck, helping you to mill it, uh, mills 4 cards. Just so often it happens that you uh, mill a uh, sword with the Emery and it, that's just uh, like crazy value. That's uh, like immediately like drawing a card. Uh, to your hand unfortunately i was missing my second land here but i had emery i had emery to uh, to play agatha from my graveyard put counter and emery, emery and now uh, have my grand architect exiled so if my opponent plan at the moment is uh, go for explosives then i still uh, get to play uh, one ring so I decide to go for the ring, uh, but opponent uh, has the counter spell, pays the sentinel tax. So they still had to uh, go for the explosives here and still have a solution for the emery. Uh, they, they found uh, preordain in response, I go for uh, Agatha. Trigger to make my uh, Emery 3-4, so this means out of the bolt range. Uh, so now uh, I uh, I untap to target the one ring with my Emery. I try to cast the ring. Unfortunately, I didn't have uh, two blue mana to cast my Grand Architect, but that was fine. I had the ring resolved. Uh, plenty of life, 18 life for me. Uh, opponent has uh, iteration uh, killing my Urza Saga again uh, they stay back because um, I just played the ring and so now I'm in a pretty good situation obviously I'm tapping the ring it doesn't get much better than that for me at the moment uh, so I was able to uh, they only had two mana open so I decided to go for Esper Sentinel first this way, even if they counter my uh, Architect, uh, I get to draw a card because uh, Sentinel immediately triggers the sword from the graveyard. Yeah, so they did have a counter. They did have a counter, but uh, I draw a card and uh, that card was Top the Foundry, which means next turn I can go for a combo again. Uh, I have uh, Grand Architect exiled with, uh, with my Agatha. Also, I have second Grand Architect in hand, so multiple ways to combo here. I stayed back with my Sentinel opponent, plays iteration, uh, gives me another card. Uh, now they find Unholy Heat to kill my Sentinel, but that is fine, as I said already. Multiple ways to combo next turn. Uh, already held Agatha. Uh, 
on the field with the Grand Architect Exile, another architect in hand. And uh, the most important thing right now is to resolve the Topter Foundry. And I have Emery on the field, which means I can just go for a Topter Foundry. If they counter it, I just replay it from my graveyard. Perfect situation. Also, if they kill the Emery, I just uh, copy it with the Gata. Yeah, it's a it's, yeah, really uh, unbeatable situation for me. So I go for Topter uh, here. And uh, I, I'm missing one mana at the moment. So I have to go for... Uh, I, uh, I uh, create a Topter first. So now I can tap uh, Topter for mana and start creating infinite of these tokens. Definitely, this takes time and a lot of opponents are not uh, conceding. This one uh, did, so uh, yeah, thanks for that opponent. And yeah, that was the game. So um, that was the match one against Merktide. Let's check out uh, match two. In the match two, I played first and I had some pretty cool, cool games. Uh, this this hand was pretty cool, so I went for Hall of Fountain on one, played my Esper Sentinel, and then as turn two I went uh, for Rona, and you will see how crazy can Rona go in this deck if you leave it unanswered. Opponent pays the Sentinel tax, and uh, yeah, plays some artifacts, Galvanic Blast, my Esper Sentinel, and now the craziness start. I do two Rona abilities. Uh, Play Agatha, third Rona ability, and exile the Grand Architect, make two mana, uh, play the One Ring, and still my Rona is untapped, so I get another Rona ability. So that is total of four Rona abilities in a single turn, also providing mana with Grand Architect, exiled with Agatha. Uh, so uh, Rona both enabled my Agatha in this situation and uh, also <clears throat> uh, let me draw a discard multiple times and uh, so this meant next turn uh, I draw enough cards that I was able to find the Topter Foundry and uh, so turn 3 I was able to cast the Ring and Agatha and Emery and Moxember I got all this on the field while exiling the Grand uh, uh, Architect and turn 4 uh, after the ring protection I untap and create infinite tokens with the Topters, infinite Topters and my opponent concedes that is the game. Okay, let's check out uh, next one. Okay, so this one was pretty cool, going totally crazy on turn 3, so you just notice that uh, if you have Rona, then uh, having like Grand Architect or Urza doesn't uh, really matter because you're just copying with Agatha. But uh, if you're playing Grand Architect from hand... Okay, so uh, game two, opponent started first, so a bit a harder game for me and my draws uh, weren't as good as uh, game one so had a bunch of lands in hand uh, but emery online which gets me the mission bubble activation each turn and these sentinels are really disturbing my opponent but they find a wear tear to get rid both of my sentinel and urza saga which was great uh, great uh, play for the opponent and I kept drawing lands, so another land from the top with three more already in hand. And after opponent killing my Urza Saga, that put me in an unfavorable position here. They also had a relic to clear my uh, graveyard. I decided to uh, take their uh, construct immediately, but that ended up not being a great play because now they had... Uh, another relic to get rid of my spell bomb. Uh, still, uh, I was able to trade with their uh, frogmite and replay the sentinel from the graveyard. So still, uh, both players like not not uh, nothing crazy going on, but uh, in a top deck mode. So if I get the ring, I uh, 
I just put myself in a very good position. I uh, force my opponent into sacking their second relic, play my Rona, uh, continue attacking, and yeah. So uh, I am in a very much big danger of uh, opponent uh, at any point just going off with their monitors, and yeah, that's exactly what happened here. So monitor into companion, into saga, into blast, and yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, get to do the Rona ability uh, last turn or get the chance to flip Rona. So now opponent has 12 damage in the air, makes another big construct. So I start uh, with the Rona ability and you will now see how crazy the Rona can get. So I went for, uh, I went for Agatha and uh, yeah. I went for Agatha and uh, uh, had uh, I, uh, I put counter on Esper Sentinel doing another draw a card. So uh, Rona in this situation gave me a three or, or maybe four chances to find a top uh, deck from uh, my library. And yeah, I did get uh, Agatha and a chance maybe to survive another turn uh, in Ballista. Uh, but yeah, this wasn't enough because uh, the opponent uh, had a pitting needle on Ballista and they really needed anything to prevent me from uh, blocking here and then doing two damage to their uh, monitor. So that was the game. Uh, but yeah, uh, Rona often can get crazy when you untap with it. You start doing those abilities, it can get really, really crazy. So let's check out the game tree. Okay, so now uh, again with a very good hand uh, starting first. Uh, Esper Sentinel uh, proved like really problematic for them. It really slowed them down a uh, lot of times. They're being forced uh, to play around it, not letting me draw cards. Unfortunately, I was missing my lens here. So I just went for uh, Emery here, hoping to get a top deck land next turn. did not get it, uh, but I get to replay uh, my bubble and play Rona, so still pretty good situation for me. And yeah, now Rona uh, with Agatha in hand means I also have Topter Foundry, so I'm just, I have, uh, I have entire combo in hand, I just need to draw um, another piece. So yeah, I got, uh, I got uh, the... Uh, Agatha here, uh, exiling again Grand Architect from my graveyard, uh, playing then Topter Foundry, and uh, now I have a combo uh, again, Sword of the Meek is, is in my graveyard, and you can see now again, I'm tapping with Rona, uh, uh, Rona gets the Grand Architect into the graveyard, uh, getting the untaps with Agatha Soul Calderon, everything uh, becomes uh, Grand Architect, and now I can tap my blue creatures for mana, so I have now a bunch of mana, and Rona even untaps when you cast the legendaries like Mox Ember, uh, the Ring, Agatha, Soul Cauldron, all of these spells are legendary, uh, plus Emery too, so you can get crazy amount of mana with just tapping uh, with Architect and then untapping Rona on each legendary ability. So this means I can now play my Ring, uh, I can play the, uh, another Agatha if needed, but I also have the infinite combo already, my, com uh, my opponent uh, concedes on the infinite topters with the sword of the meek and that is the game, so let's check out the match 3. Okay, uh, start off with a decent hand, nothing special, I was against Mill and since this was a Mill, uh, it's and top deck was another Mox Ember, and it, it, yeah, it was definitely kind of slow. So I get the Rona, hoping for Rona to survive, but opponent have the Fatal Push. So I go for uh, Grand Architect, and the really cool thing about Grand Architect is it immediately taps for 2 mana, 
so it immediately can cast your uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron on turn it enters or Sword of the Meek or even if you have another blue creature you can immediately cast uh, your One Ring on turn 3 which is like very very relevant especially those non-interactive uh, games where they can't kill your creatures that easily and you're like um, sure you will get a turn 3 ring with the Grad Architect in hand and that's pretty cool so opponent uh, goes for a Tasha here exiles 17 cards with it and that is it so before I get the chance to try to raise them uh, they finish me off so let's go check out the game too game 2 I'm now playing first and I knew what I was playing against so uh, it was a much easier game for me I knew like I needed uh, uh, to board in few removals like portable hole for their crabs try to be more um, aggressive and I really like this play sentinel turn 1 turn 2 portable hole into emery this is like so cool in a lot of situations milled one ring and the top to foundry with emery which was pretty good I had three topters in my hand but I decided to play one from the graveyard anyway so now uh, I st started attacking with the sentinel I had my topter on the field so I was hoping for them to mill my uh, of course to mill my sword of the meek so I can start uh, getting those uh, topter tokens also had Urza Saga active next turn uh, to create a large construct so I went for uh, the bubble uh, not cracking it just making my construct bigger for the time uh, but I had multiple options here and I decided to go for uh, two top third tokens with Grand Architect and Walking Ballista so actually uh, that is a lot of damage if they don't have a removal for my Grand Architect even if they do it's still fine so I create a construct on uh, uh, create construct uh, on next turn and just start attacking with ballistas and topters. Opponent now goes for the archive trap. End of turn, uh, I create uh, I create sword of the meek. I didn't care about my topter foundry that much because I had another two in my hand. So I just went uh, for uh, the attacks. Uh, m they block my walking ballista. So actually, if I if I set my springleaf dream uh, drum uh, last turn, I would get one damage more, which probably wouldn't be that relevant, but still. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, I untap, opponent plays their Tasha, and I leave me with three cards in my library. This means a win for me, but I was like, yeah, that, uh, that one damage was almost relevant because if I made another top tier, my opponent would be on four, and in my upkeep phase, I would be able to put uh, one more counter on Ballista and finish my opponent off. This way, I needed to get lucky. Uh, with their Tasha to not die from it so that was uh, definitely a misplay uh, but yeah let's now check out the game 3 game 3 was funny and I almost lost my trophy here but opponent did the mistake and you will see what it was okay so I started with gemstone caverns here and I had multiple options for turn 2 I was about to start with the Lavinia so I uh, prevent them from uh, playing their uh, archive trap but I really wanted to get rid of uh, the uh, getting rid of the Hedron Crab and unfortunately now I didn't have Lavinia on the field and they were able to play the archive trap milling a lot of cards uh, so now I played Lavinia and Drona the only thing I could play at the moment uh, they had Field of Ruin into Drowning Lock, pretty pretty good, one card in, just one card in my opponent's hand at the moment and uh, yeah, but I was really low on cards right now, just 7 cards at the moment 
uh, and yeah, uh, I go for a run ability, putting Minamo on the field, uh, passing the turn, and I don't know what exactly happened here, but I was I started making these uh, top tier tokens, and did my opponent think that I can go infinite on the end step? What did what did happen here? I'm not sure. I think they thought I can go infinite on their end step, create infinite top tier tokens, and kill them or something because they conceded. Yeah, that was really weird, and I, there was just a large chance of me losing the trophy here. That my opponent needed to have anything on their turn to finish me off. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that was really weird. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that was a uh, present from the opponent in the match 3, so let's now go to the next one. Uh, in the match 4, uh, this, was, uh, this, is, this was like really satisfying league, because I just brew this deck, and this was my first league with it, immediately I go to the... Um, Immediately I start the league and do the trophy, so that's like one of the best feelings when you're brewing. Just when you're, you have, have the idea and immediately it uh, it goes off, the idea proves uh, very good. So yeah, that's very satisfying. I had multiple options here, uh, but I was playing against Tron and uh, I had... Uh, lot of good draws in a situation like this, so I decide to play my Agatha Soul Caldron, try to find uh, something from the top of my deck, do those Ron abilities. Yeah, but my opponent, uh, turn 3 has a natural Tron, uh, but they are playing Eldrazi Tron, so they went for uh, Totnots here. Unfortunately, now I thought like there is no chance the Tron can discard uh, my top tier foundry so i uh, i discarded one of them with rona and now my opponent took their uh, took the second one with the totnot seer yeah that was really unfortunate because now i had a grand architect exiled uh, with agatha which means and sword of the mink in my graveyard which means if i didn't discard my top tier foundry i would have infinite combo on next turn and just i'll try to win the game uh, this way I was still in a very favored position, like uh, large construct on the field, Urza Saga there. Yeah, but still. Okay, so uh, I went again for the Rona, uh, played the Moxember, do a bunch of the Rona abilities again. This is like really cool. Uh, I uh, take two uh, mana and then uh, untap Rona on the hardcast I go to create a construct token a blue creature so I tap it for two mana to uh, to cast a large ballista opponent this members in response so I just decide to like play 3-3 three, three ballista create another construct token and that was really fine by me okay so I went for it uh, create cast 3-3 three, three ballista create construct uh, pass the turn Yeah, so pretty good situation for me with Agatha in uh, on the field, uh, spell bomb and another Earth Saga activation on the next turn. Opponent of course has the Tron assembled and they have uh, they have a lot of uh, good top decks there. Yeah, so unfortunately I uh, I misclicked on my turn. Uh, I misclicked there. And uh, yeah, I wasn't able to uh, deal with their ballista this way, but uh, still it was fine. Uh, opponent uh, needed to wait uh, for my turn to kill my Emery, but I managed. To, uh, it was my Emery was now untapped, so I was able to uh, target a spell in my graveyard with the Emery, and that's all I wanted really. So I just targeted targeted Doctor Foundry, and now I have a Grand Architect exiled with Agatha, and again I have. Uh, infinite combo with topters, infinite topters, and yeah, this Eldrazi Tron can't really beat this, or maybe have uh, like one spell that can help uh, help them with this. 
but yeah so uh, uh, this means uh, this means a little next turn so that they have to top deck immediately and I also gain a bunch of life which puts me in a favored position even if they do, do something relevant I also get uh, two large uh, constructs which they have to deal with and yeah so uh, my opponent forced me into uh, doing uh, a lot of these uh, top turns but somewhere on the 20 top turns they decide to concede and that was the game okay so uh, let's go check the game too Again, uh, starting with the gemstone caverns, exiling the land. Uh, I have Lavinia. Lavinia can be pretty good against them, uh, against the regular Tron. Not that much against Eldrazi Tron, but still they have some spells uh, they're prevented from casting uh, with Lavinia on the field. Uh, so I decide to uh, go for the top tier here. A main enemy for this deck, I would say, is Karn, the great creator. Opponent didn't crack expedition map in response, so I decided to name the expedition map with the needle. I put my ballista in graveyard and make my Lavinia, uh, give my Lavinia a counter and the ballista ability. This can be really relevant against the Karn because Karn prevents. Um, Current prevents artifact abilities, but Lavinia is not artifact stole, so my Lavinia still has uh, abilities from a Ballista. I put counter on it, uh, kill the expedition map, attack uh, Karn for 3, put it on 3 loyalty. So if they use the Karn ability, I can use my Lavinia to ping them, ping it and kill it. Okay, again, they play second expedition, uh, plus the Karn make expedition a creature and play their own Ballista. So now I decide to go for uh, Lavinia attacks. Let my opponent just uh, jump block me and save uh, the Lavinia ability for uh, their turn. They do nothing, they didn't even plus the card. So I just make uh, another counter end of turn and make them jump again with the 4-4 Lavinia holding the subtlety for their turn. Now opponent uh, makes a more counters on the blast zone. I play subtlety in response and deal three, uh, 2 damage to Karn, which means I can kill uh, Karn next turn. And then again, finally I can use my uh, artifacts. So I ki finally kill uh, the Karn, I play the ring, get the ring ability, and now my opponent uh, has doesn't have Tron assembled, only three lands on the field, yeah, and uh, in a pretty poor position, but they find their Tron immediately and find C Cityscape Leveler, killing my subtlety. This was definitely a big problem. I didn't have any of my combo pieces at the moment, but had the one ring. So I go for the Architect and another ring, but this doesn't accomplish much really. So I only get protection for another turn, so I still have to uh, do uh, another top deck. I get uh, the ring uh, draw again, uh, passing the turn, letting them use their Cityscape leveler ability to kill uh, anything they want. And a they also find Karn the Great Creator, which was so good in this situation. I totally like uh, killing my ring and all the cards in my hand. And yeah, I didn't have uh, much chance after this, so I concede and let's check out the game 3. Uh, okay, so we were both very low on time. I had Pretty good hand in game 3, uh, pitting needle turn 1 into turn 2 top tier foundry, but opponent was really low on time, so we didn't get to play this game and opponent timed out. 
I'm still kind of favored on the play, but yeah, we won't know how that would end up. And yeah, let's uh, go to see the final match, match 5. I was playing against Creativity. And kept a pretty good 6, uh, turn 1 Sentinel into turn 2 Rona. I go first a crack uh, Misha Bubble to see if I want to keep cards on the top of my library. It was a top tier foundry and I already had a Grand Architect in hand. So I decide to keep, I just need Sword of the Meek and another land to get the combo. So turn 2, uh, I uh, didn't know what my opponent was playing. So I just decided to grab grab both of my basics, uh, play Rona. And you already seen in uh, previous games how Rona can get crazy if you untap with it. My opponent knows this and they go for a Bolt Rona. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get my third land. I really, really wanted my third land at this point. Uh, but it was fine, I played my Emery here. And continue attacking with Sentinel. Opponent uh, has another removal. And uh, still no ter third land for me, so I just uh, had to play my Emery. No other play is possible. Uh, if I untap with Emery, I still get to play uh, Grand Architect plus the One Ring, which puts me in an incredibly good position. So even if my opponent goes for creativity, I still just sack the Sentinel and play Architect, play the Ring, and I'm still pretty good uh, with the top turn in my hand. I buy myself another turn to combo off, but still no lands. I did uh, get a uh, spell bomb from the graveyard to uh, bounce this Archon. Opponent Teferis and bounces my Emery. So unfortunately, just I was just struggling with lands so much in this game. And they had uh, just these annoying Teferi bounces. And yeah, turn after turn, just no land for me. And opponent was uh, getting... Uh, 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 they didn't have second creativity still, but yeah, like, too much going on at this point. I go for, uh, my plan was Vulcan Ballista, Emery this turn, and then try to go for Architect. Uh, but opponent has the counter, so I wasn't able to basically play anything this turn. Next turn, they had another uh, lose focus, and that was it. Yeah, so uh, they got game one. Uh, they had the creativity turn after. So let's check out the game two. Uh, game two, uh, pretty good. Two rings, Rona, Sentinel, Emery. A lot of stuff, a lot of very useful stuff for this matchup. So I go again, start with Sentinel. This is very difficult uh, situation for uh, control opponent. Yeah, they have to play through Sentinel which means uh, killing my other threats, uh, letting me draw a card. Uh, I play... Uh, I had three mana here, so I was able to play the Silex and Emery. I also think I did a mistake here. I think I had to go for a Breeding Pool there to get, uh, get myself a Breeding Pool on the field because I have Haver Might now. Yeah, definitely top deck Heaver might next turn, and now I didn't have that uh, breeding pool, which would be very useful uh, in this game. So definitely a mistake. I wasn't pressured at all by opponent, so getting a breeding pool that turn would be like really good. Opponent has Renan six to kill my uh, to kill my Sentinel, but I have the one ring and the needle naming Bren. So pretty good uh, position for me. Opponent both sages getting rid of my needle and then uh, getting the both sage back. So they were able to like really hurt me here, <laughs> uh, killing a lot of my stuff and returning both sage each turn with Ren. It's really good. So I go for the ring. I also have Minamo. Minamo is so good in this deck. Untapping the ring, untapping the Agatha, tapping Rona. Untapping Emery basically untaps your whole deck. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Uh, yeah, I, I would be definitely interested maybe playing second Minamo over second Gemstone Cavalry, 
wasn't that impressed with the gemstone. Uh, okay, opponent uh, goes for Teferi again, bouncing uh, one of my Emery's and then using the bounding to kill Emery again. But in the process, they milled, they milled uh, Sword of the Meek. Uh, or I already have it. I already had one, so yeah, it wasn't really important. But I played the Sentinel, I get the... This is really sweet, like, this play, play Sentinel and get the swords immediately uh, from the graveyard, equipped on Sentinel. This is just... feels very good, very often. And, yeah, no, I didn't want them to kill my uh, Sentinel in response, so I exile a Grand Architect here. I get... Uh, I get... Uh, Emery, so uh, to get a mana, enough mana to play Topter and get still mana to sack uh, Sword to start creating infinite Topters. And now I had uh, infinite Topters, and my opponent uh, really can't beat that, even if they have the Archon or whatever. I have infinite life, infinite Topters, so uh, opponent concedes uh, soon after, and that is that was the game. Okay, so let's now check the final game the for the trophy. Playing second against creativity with like basically no removals. So you just got to face. The, they, they will probably resol resolve the turn four Archon and you have to win through that and through all the removal they throw at you before that. So it's not that easy, but yeah, this deck can really have explosive turns and can do uh, a lot of stuff in the early turns. So uh, definitely has uh, has a game against the creativity. Opponent decides to go for Esper Sentinel here instead of Emery, which means uh, they okay. They also had the bolt there, so yeah, I guess they had everything. Um, I went for Sentinel again because my opponent was uh, mana screwed for a turn and I didn't want to let them, uh, I want to pressure them with Sentinel. Yeah, it would be better if I played at the Architect uh, because my top deck was a top deck foundry, but there is no way I could have known that. So yeah, I, at, at that moment Sentinel was a bit better play. Opponent uh, has locus, uh, lose focus here. To make me pay two mana, I have two mana to pay it, uh, but now they are able to get rid of it on their turn using the Leyland Binding, which was still fine. They had to use two cards and pay the Sentinel text to, uh, uh, to get rid of my uh, Topter Foundry. Yeah, unfortunately, if I decided to go for the Architect that turn when I went for Sentinel, I would already have uh, Infinite. Uh, but still, it was a fine situation for me. Um, I had a lot of stuff going on. I got a Soul Cauldron in my hand. Uh, Emery also. Yeah, so, also now I milled over the One Ring. I don't know what happened to me at this uh, right now, but I was like convinced I had Topter Foundry in my hand. Uh, in my uh, graveyard, so I can uh, just uh, combo. But yeah, uh, I I was not thinking right, and uh, I, I should have probably played just played uh, the one ring with Emery. But instead, uh, I thinking I got the top the final event for Agatha to exile the Grand Architect and do the combo. But then I realized I don't really have top in my graveyard, so I can't do this really. Uh, opponent goes for creativity targeting my Emery and the filigree selects, so in response I crack the filigree, uh, killing both of their tokens and my mocks, and uh, add the spell bomb my Emery to my hand, then replay Emery, equip it with a uh, sword, and yeah, again, I target the land they targeted with uh, Vrenna 6, and I had now Minamo to do two Agatha Soul Cauldron abilities. And now I had uh, like a Topter Foundry I was looking for previously. And again, find the infinite Topters here. 
and uh, the creativity opponent can't really deal with uh, infinite topters and this deck is just so good in creating uh, infinite topters uh, all the games basically I won on the infinite topters some of them you win with Saga but most of them you win with topters it's just so efficient at getting them and through all the removal and all opponent can throw at you you still get to do it and yeah the deck feels like really good and it's very very fun to play I like had those crazy turn trees are really just that fun and it's like a really uh, a specific um, enjoyment in casting like uh, uh, those five six uh, spells uh, from uh, Rhone especially from using Grand Architect and Rhone abilities Arona is really crazy in this deck, a lot of legendaries, Agatha, Emery, uh, Mox Embers, the One Rings, a uh, lot of, uh, also Stone of Eric, Eric is, uh, sorry, is legendary, so that's another one. Okay, so that is it, uh, hope you like the league, hope you like the gameplay, um, uh, just a friendly reminder to click like, click subscribe, comment in the video, especially if you had gameplay experience. With this list, I'm really interested to see how it went for you. And that's it for today. Again, thank you for watching and goodbye.